Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this episode I'm going to be machining the uh, the bell mouth for the top of my chimney here. You can see the drawing in front of me. It'll be machined from 2 inch brass. Um, I could make something a bit simpler but I thought I'd make something a bit decorative to go on the top. This is the chimney itself. You see I've already machined the standoffs and, and uh, machined and uh, soldered on some rings. These are just cosmetic to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, this middle section here. I'm going to machine a, a name plaque to go here. You can see it's got a condensation tube to drain on the back there. So the, the bell mouth will sit on the top here. Uh, it will only overlap by uh, three, four millimeters and have a feathered edge and I'll solder it on and then buff it in. You won't, you'll hardly know it's been joined. So you'll see I, uh, I finished the displacement oiler from the last video. You see here it's got the standoffs there. Got a bit of detail down there. I thought I could make something simple but I thought I'll, I'll try and decorate it somewhat. So I'm quite happy with that it's finished. So uh, the, uh, this particular job will be a lot of work done with form tools. It's all going to be uh, free machining and a compound uh, slide use. Uh, there's obviously no CNC machining in it. Uh, you'll see here there's a, a number of form tools next to me. So this, uh, this tool here you can see it's, it's got a clearance ground at the back here. I'm actually going to use this to undercut the back edge where, the, where it mounts on the tube. Uh, you'll see as well I You'll often see in my videos, I use a lot of these small tungsten carbide uh, boring bars. I actually make these uh, on a tool and cutter grinder out of old um, shanks, old, you know, like slot drills and end mills that have been broken. You see, I, I use a lot of these. Now, these are contrary to their size. They're actually really rigid. I've, I've got no problem at all, you know, boring a 25 millimeter bore, you know, 20, 22, 23 millimeters deep for such a small bar. Uh, it's it's great. Great finish. Um, no, no chatter. It's good. And you'll see I... I just have a number of different size holes so I can just fit them in there and then this goes in your standard tool uh, tool holder on the lathe. And you'll see I, I use a lot of different sizes. So instead of drilling I'll often drill and then bore small holes to size even instead of using reamers. I find these cut, you know, they, I get the exact size I want and uh, it's, it always runs concentrically. You never get any run out like you can, you know, when the drill doesn't necessarily want to follow the, uh, the centered hole. So. Now there's a there's a longer version that I've made previously. So so anyway, the um, this outside radius here, I'm going to do with this big form tool. See, it's just tool steel. It's it's had a bit of work, um, you know, getting it to getting it to the shape. But uh, this already existed, so I'm just going to put throw this one into the mix and and basically make it do its job. It's only a cosmetic um, part for a chimney, but because it's actually facing the wrong way. I'm going to run the lathe in reverse and flip this upside down to use it on the, uh, you know, obviously have to lift the tool up to get centre height, but I'm going to run it on the, the outside in reverse. Uh, the inside here, uh, this end up here is approximately 5.5 degrees from square, and this end down here is approximately 75 degrees from square. So basically I'm going to uh, back turn the shoulder here, then I'm going, so I've got a, a, a datum point inside, then I'm going to machine a five and a half degree taper up till I meet that corner then I'm going to machine a 75 degree taper from the outside in and then I'm just going to adjust the compound slide about five degrees at a time so I'm just going to go five degrees and just keep five degrees five degrees and just chase this all around and I'll just sort of get a feel for it as it goes and then I'll I'll get a polishing stick in there with some coarse emery take any facets off and then polish the inside I've done it many times before it, it's a you know it works really well uh, the outside here I'll I'll use a form tool to machine most of this but I'll uh, turn a taper across here first to remove most of the material and then use a form tool but I'll leave this end here nice and thick because it's going to be very thin so I'll leave this nice and thick so it can support itself for the cutting and I'll do this work here first and then I'll just gently nibble away this last little bit and part that off with a little tool steel blade right at the end so uh, yeah I'll get down to it take this over to the lathe so I've got the bit of brass mounted in the chuck You'll see it's uh, it's sticking out well, from the face there. It's 100 millimeters out, so you know it's it's a big piece of material, though, so it's fairly rigid, and my machine's fairly rigid as well. But if you've got a small lathe, you may not get away with a bit of material sticking out this far, uh, especially when you start using form tools. You know, normal turning tools. Yeah, that's one thing. But once you start engaging, uh, you know, a bigger cutting area, you'll you'll tend to get shatter. So you can beat that by you know either changing the inclination on the tool or putting a live center in this end. Uh, Another thing you can try is if you've got a uh, machine with variable speed, if you just uh, slow it right down and 
uh, minimise your, you know, your cutting area as best as you can, but if you just constantly uh, lift and drop the RPM just by 20, 30 RPM is all it takes, you'll, you'll beat chatter. Um, just by changing that frequency, it doesn't have time to, to find its harmonic frequency and you'll find you'll, you'll be able to use form tools without getting chatter. But anyway, I'll, I'll start now and I'll get the, a hole drilled up the middle of this brass. Yeah, I'm using a 21 millimeter drill bit here, so I'm just going to push it straight through. I'm not going to bother with a pilot hole. Yeah, I'm going to start by facing the front here and then I'm going to bore this uh, this size here you'll see it's 22.8 so I'll bore this all the way through and out the back here so I've got a nominal size to work with once all that's finished um, then I'll get in with a, 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 a custom boring bar and I'll, I'll get in here and I'll back turn this shoulder at the back here I'll just take a measurement of that to uh, set the tool diameter. So it's 21.17. There should be 22 and a half, so I'll just check it before I take my finish cut. Yeah, I don't know if the camera can see, but that tiny little boring bar gives a surprisingly good finish. Okay. 22.50, that'll do. Spot on. Right. Okay, so I've finished this bore here, 22.8. Uh, now I've got to do this taper here. Now, when you're using compound slide at an angle up a bore, it's hard to determine when this corner is. So it's actually easier for me to come through now with this this boring bar and back turn this area. And then I'll finish that diameter so that fits onto the uh, the chimney. And once I've got a corner inside, then I've only got to set the uh, the compound slide to five and a half degrees and just cut that angle from here the entry of the, the bore straight through until I until I meet that corner and once I've done that then I can set the angle down here 75 
and then just chase every three or four degrees all the way around until I, until I get a radius and then a, a polishing stick will take the, the high spots or the corners off the facets. So uh, I'm going to take this, uh, you can see it's a custom ground tool, it's got a little bit of a relief on the back so I'll plunge in but then as I move along it'll this, this corner here will do the finishing so I don't know, I'll go ahead and set it up for, uh, for center height. So I've got this tool set up in the tool post here, um, I've set the center height, I don't think you need to see that. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to set this level, so this corner on the back level with this, so that I can go in 18 millimeters uh, as per the drawing. So the way I do that, uh, I just bring this in and I take another another piece of ground uh, tool or any, any bit of material you've got that's nice and straight, and I just close that up until I see the daylight on the edge of the uh, job disappear. Now I'm going to set that at zero, then I'm going to come out and do that again and just see if I get the same reading twice. Yeah, within a within a one five, so gives you some idea how good your uh, your feel is. So anyway, now that I've got that set, I'm just going to come out gently and I'm going to touch the inside of that bore, and then I'm going to tell the digital readout that that's. 22.8 that way when I'm up inside the hole I'm going to do everything by digital readout I won't be able to measure this until I pull the part out that's why it's important to get that first bore spot on size so that I can come off that as a reference Okay, that's set. Now I'm going to go up in the bore and I'm going to do this uh, this step section at the back here. So I have to go up 18 millimeters and then come out to 25.3. So I may take a couple of cuts, but uh, and obviously I'll have to go deeper than I need to because of the width of the tool. It's only finishing on this corner, so I'll have to actually feed along quite a bit. And that's roughed out now, so I'll just get in there and uh, do the finish pass. All done. Okay, you can see here the step there at the back. So that's that's undercut at the back there. So that five and a half degree taper now needs to go from this corner until it counters that corner. And then I turn around and turn the compound slide and then go from this corner in at 75 degrees and then I have to keep breaking that corner. Just basically follow it around three or four degrees at a time till you get a radius. You see I've taken a felt pen to that corner. Just basically when the felt pen disappears, I know I'm when I've machined it off, I know I'm I'm at that corner. It's the highest point in there.
Okay, the felt pin on that corner has disappeared, so I'm uh, right at that corner. So now I change the compound slide to 75 degrees. Okay, now I need to machine this at a 75 degree angle. I need a the point where it needs to pass through is about 1.25 mil from this corner because this has this is 50.8 at the moment. It has to be 48, so just about one one and a quarter millimeters in from that edge will be fine. Okay, now I need to alter the compound slide just about three or four degrees each time and just keep uh, leaving a small land and then chase this around and just all, all the time watching where, the, uh, where the, the angle is running out. It may have to alter it, it may be three degrees, it may be five degrees, something like that. But I just sort of get a feel for it as I go. Now you can see that's fairly nicely bell mouth. I just need to polish this corner off now. Maybe even take a few extra cuts on this corner, but I'll give it a polish first. Okay, so now I'm going to take a polishing stick, just a piece of six mil or quarter inch rod. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm just going to wrap a piece of emery in a in a hacksaw cut. Now, if you keep the emery cloth smaller than the the bore inside there and wrap it nice and tight, you'd be amazed how much material you can remove. Like these facets in here from the the angles, you you rip them out in just a matter of a matter of about one or two minutes. So. Okay, now I'll go down to a smoother grade. And now hit it with a bit of steel wool. So you can see I've finished the inside. That's uh, coarse emery and then a bit of 600 uh, wet and dry and then a bit of steel wool and straight to that finish um, just in a matter of minutes. So it's not like I put a lot of effort into that. So now I'll uh, come back and uh, machine the outside to 48 millimeters along here and then start the undercut from from here back in and uh, then I'll start work with the form tool and after that I'll put a little radius on this corner outside here but that's that's no big deal that could be done just with emery it'll that corner would be so small so uh, yeah I'll get the form tool set up so I just thought I'd take a moment to introduce you to one of the dodgiest tools in my workshop believe it or not this thing is fantastic I've been making them for years um, an old guy by the name of Len uh, taught me this about, I think, 1997. He'd been doing it for about 25 years before that. Um, basically, it's just a rolled up newspaper. Just leave it a bit hollow in the end with a few cavities going up in there that you can see. Take a pair of scissors and just splay all the ends out so it's nice and loose. And just tape up one end. And all you do is, when you're turning, 
instead of having brass going all over your lathe and all over the workshop, you just take that bad boy and stick it straight on the tool, just like that, and the, the brass goes straight up the inside and falls back on the bed. And you can take the biggest cut you like, and the, the lathe stays clean, you don't get covered in brass, there's nothing flying at your face. It's great, so make yourself a dodgy tool exactly like this one. You'll see how good it works in this video. Okay, you'll see here, this angle here, you can achieve, you know, very close to your finished size just by throwing this across the drawing. You'll see it's about 61 degrees across there. So I can take the compound slide, come, you'll see this little dimension here, I can come roughly 2.3 millimeters from this end and then take a, a 61 degree taper across here and that'll get most of that material out so that I'm only trying to get the last little bit out with the form tool instead of you know, having a huge quantity of material and a few high spots. I can just take a flat across there but what I'll do is I'll go across and I'll stop about, you know, this is only 21 millimeters wide so I'll stop you know, out here somewhere at about maybe 17 millimeters and leave the rest of that material untouched just so it's nice and strong. And I'll do this work with the form tool and then just make my way back. Okay, now it's time to set up the form tool. Uh, I'll have to do a bit of positioning to get it in there and maybe rotate the tool post a little bit. And uh, obviously uh, setting the centre height, if you don't have a quick change tool post uh, like, like I have here, it's a little bit harder to flip the tool upside down, but you can always, out of desperation, you can always put a couple of packers underneath your tool post and lift your entire tool post up if you need to. Okay, you'll see I've got this form tool set up. Um, you'll see it's on centre height here. But having a quick change tool post, I just lift this up above the, uh, the you know, regardless of the set screw, I just lift it up far above that and lets me get it on uh, center height when it's upside down. So one of the advantages of having a quick change tool post. But you'll see, that's all, that's all good to go. You just got to remember to put the lathe in reverse. Now I often use my fingers for checking this, you, you know, just to get a feel for how thick it is. Um, you know, if it, if it feels nice and thin it'll often look good and if you don't get it thin enough it'll look a bit chunky. So I just rub my fingers over it quite a bit. Now at this point I'll just get a measurement of this diameter here. That's roughly 30.87. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit more out of here. There's approximately approximately four millimeters to come out of this area here. But sooner or later, this is going to get too thin to support the, the, the pressure of this form tool, the cutting force. So I'm just going to pause, change the tool out, and complete this radius. And uh, 
and then I'll continue with the form tool just in case it decides it wants to break off before I've had a chance to do this radius. Okay, so I'll stop and do that, this radius on this corner now. Okay, so I often get people asking me how I make my form tools. Um, it's just a, uh, you know, a system that I've developed over the years. I use Dremels a lot. I use these little stones. You know, we're all, we've all seen them. Um, now, I'll take a form tool or a tool that already exists, and I'll often use one of these tools, and I'll go over to the, uh, the bench grinder, and I'll actually put this, you know, with the Dremel running as well, and I'll use the, the bench grinder to dress the, the stone to the dimer that I want, and I leave a taper, always leave a taper. And that way, when you plunge in, in the front, I'm just trying to get it on camera, you plunge in the front to make your form tool, and it automatically cuts your inclination following the radius, so you've got the correct cutting clearance all the way around. So you'll see there, I don't know if the camera can capture that. It makes a really nice little form tool. So I've been doing it that way for years, it works on any size, um, and you get surprisingly good finish. Okay, I've got this form tool lined up. If it's a really small radius or your, your eyes are a little bit challenged, you can um, shine the light down below the job here. And if you take a, uh, like a, a jeweler's loop or similar, you can actually line the tool up nicely just by looking at the shadow. So you keep top of the, the top of the job dark and, and the bottom light. And if you've got like a bit of brass or whatever down here, the light on there lets you uh, set the job up really easily and you'd be amazed your eyes can normally see you know my eyes especially they can see like 01 02 of a millimeter pretty easily so it works well Okay, you'll see here that I constantly change the angle of the tool post so even though the form tool doesn't cover the full range of that radius I just keep swinging it around okay, that radius is finished on this corner here now just uh, I always keep a piece of you know, wet and dry on my lathe uh, a piece that's really worn out, full of brass or similar. Uh, sole intention is just to take any machining marks or anything that's unwanted out of there, but not take a lot of material off. Um, I've always got a couple of bits, and a lot of people come to use my lathe and want to throw the pieces away that I keep, but this is the reason. Okay, I've got the form tool set back up again. I'm just going to bring it into this diameter here and set the tool diameter again. Obviously, I've turned the tool post a bunch of times, I've lost my digital readout position. so. At the moment this is uh, about 29.5 and the finish size is 26.8 so I'll just go in and touch this and then I'll start machining this away and before I, before it's finished I'll get in and give this a bit of a polish on this back face and then a, a quick once over with steel wool on the whole part and then I'll part it off and it's finished.
and that's the form tool work finished. I'll just give this polish now. This surface here is probably about 0.6 or 0.7 of a millimetre thick, so about 25, uh, 28 thou for the Imperial guys. That's pretty thin, that's why it's starting to ring. Okay, so I'm about to do a bit of polishing in the lathe. You'll see I've thrown a rag down here on the bed. Um, if you're going to be using coarse emery, it's always a, it's always a, you know, a good practice because you can use an old rag like this, a bit of emery, a bit of grit and whatever is going to fall down onto the bed, then your saddle's going to go straight across it. Now, yeah, you've got wipers down here, but some of it's going to get up under your, under your saddle. So I just throw an old rag there. Make sure your lead screw down the bottom. Make sure your lead screw's turned off so it doesn't get wrapped up in there. But a um, bit of a safety um, point. Um, I've seen a lot of people polishing from the shoulder. And what I mean by the shoulder, I mean they, they'll have the emery like this, swinging from the shoulder and if they're doing like the inside like this and they slip off because of the length of your arm by the time you realized you've slipped off the job your hand will go straight into the jaws now, if it's an older chuck where the corners are a little bit rounded off it doesn't bite you quite as badly but if it's a nice new chuck it'll open your knuckles up something terrible so um what i do is i bring the tool post in and if i'm polishing like this obviously you can see this is well clear but um if i'm polishing like this i put that against the back and i just move my wrist that way if you slip off you've only got like maybe one inch of travel and you use the tool post on the on the back of your arm and the chances of actually hurting yourself i mean i've had some horrendous injuries over the years i'm talking years ago and i worked out since i since i started putting my hand or my arm against a tool post like this to do any polishing work i've never been hurt since so i highly recommend it Okay, now I'll go to steel wool. I just use a, a fresh piece like this. Um, it doesn't seem to cut for that long. Um, so, you know, you got to keep refreshing it so you go through a bit of it. Okay, that's it. Finished. i just got to part it off now. I'll just take camera in for a close-up before I uh, part it off. Okay, to part it off, I'm going to use a specially ground little parting off blade. Now, I'm just trying to get it in focus. You'll notice the top of it there. It's, uh, it's ground on a, about a, maybe a 30 degree angle. Now, this is a very thin wall section, you know, maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimetres or 28 thou, give or take. Um, so, as it, as it pierces through, it's going to leave almost no burr on the back. If you were to part this off with a square, um, even, a, you know, tool steel parting blade that you've ground if it's square or remotely close to square when it breaks off on the back it's going to leave still a quite a big burr on one side and yeah you can go and polish that off but this will come out of the lathe almost completely finished so you know normally when I was doing you know this sort of thing I'd have the lathe absolutely singing and just catch the job in my hand but it's pretty late at night here I don't think the neighbors are going to like that so I'm just going to set the, uh, the Z0 position so because this is all radius and it's quite nice on the end, I can't afford to go and touch it on the job, so I just put a piece of flat tool steel there. And I'll just wind up until I feel it lift. And then I'll come back a fraction, and then I just look at the daylight gap with the jeweler's loop. And with the swarf in the background, I can normally get it pretty good. Okay, right now that's about, about five hundredths of a millimeter. So about two or three thou away. So I'll just allow for that on digital readout. Okay, I'm back at the bench. You can see I've got the part out of the uh, the lathe. All I've done is deburr this corner here with a little deburring tool. Um, this outside corner here I broke in the lathe with the steel wool. You can see it's got quite a nice finish. So that's straight out of the lathe. It's only had emery cloth, um, 600 wet and dry, and steel wool. 
It's got to be a fresh piece of steel wool though because it, uh, it just it stops cutting after a very short period of time but if you just keep turning it around to a fresh part it's okay. So this goes on the end of the chimney just like this and uh, I'll solder that joint and then buff it in and that, that sharp corner there will disappear. But you can see it's, uh, it's quite attractive the way it is. But uh, if you like this video and found it useful uh, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.